Hello friends. Today we are going to discuss resilient modulus of asphalt mixes. Resilient modulus is the most common method of measuring stiffness modulus of asphalt mixes. The test procedure is very simple and it can be used to test the core sample taken from field also. And because of its simplicity and applicability to core samples, this test has become popular in many countries including India. There are several terms that are used in relation to the modulus and let us first understand the difference between these terms to avoid any confusion in the later part of this session. And the first is the modulus of rupture, the next modulus of elasticity, modulus of resilience and modulus of rigidity. The modulus of rupture also called bending strength or fluxual strength is a measure of specimen strength before rupture. It is mostly used in concrete technology and it can be used to determine the overall strength of the specimen. Now there is a difference between the modulus of rupture and modulus of elasticity. In case of modulus of elasticity, we measure the deflection in the specimen but we do not measure its ultimate strength. Whereas in case of modulus of rupture, it is the strength before rupture. The modulus of resilience is defined as the maximum energy that can be absorbed per unit volume without creating a permanent distortion in the specimen. And a materials resident modulus is actually an estimate of its modulus of velocity and, and again there is a difference between the modulus of velocity and modulus of resilience. The modulus of elasticity is the stress divided by strain where you apply a slow load. In case of resilient modulus, it is the stress divided by strain for rapidly applied loads. And that is the reason that in payment design or in payment performance, we use the modulus of resilience and not the modulus of velocity because resilience is measured under rapidly applied load as experienced by the pavements. The modulus of rigidity is another term which is used in materials. As I defined, modulus of velocity is used to calculate the deformation of an object when the deforming, deforming force acts perpendicular to the surface of the object. But when this force is parallel to the surface, then it is modulus of rigidity. So modulus of rigidity is, to, is used to calculate deformation when deforming force acts parallel to the surface of an object. So that is the basic difference between moduli of different types. Now resident modulus means the ability to recover. And therefore, it is the ratio of applied cyclic stress to recoverable or elastic strain after many cycles of repeated loading. And that is the definition given by FHWA. Now, we need this rigid modulus because it can be used to evaluate the pavement materials quality. It can evaluate the effect of temperature and vehicle speed, that is frequency. And this is an input parameter for mechanistic empirical payment design guidelines for flexible payments in many countries. IRC 37 also makes use of resident modulus in the design of payment. And as, as I told you, it is the ratio of recovered strain to the applied stress. And it is used to characterize the bitmus mixes under the linear viscoelastic region. The test procedure considers rest period that simulates traffic loads with different vehicle speeds and therefore various rest periods. And there are three methods which are popular in different countries. One is US method which is given in ASTM code. Another is European method which is given in European code 12697. Another third one. The third one is Australian method that is given in AS2891. In all these three methods, the loading pulse is hover sign. The only difference is of loading period and rest period. The testing temperature in ASTM is suggested 5 to 50 degrees centigrade. Resident modulus is very sensitive to testing temperature. 
the loading time is 0.1 second and unloading time is 0.9 second and peak stress in ASTM method is, is 10 to 20 percent of indirect tensile strength of the material or specimen at 25 degrees centigrade. In European method, the loading period is 0.248 second and pulse repetition period is 3 second. Load area factor is 0.6. Whereas in Australian method, the rise time is just 0.08 second and pulse repetition period is 3 second as in case of European method. So in the difference between the pulse repetition period and the loading period. Now Indian payment design guidelines recommend ASTM D4123 test method to determine the rigid modulus and therefore in this session we will discuss this method. Now that is the difference between the three methods. In European method the pulse rate the load is applied for 0.248 second and total pulse time is 3 second. The pulse is repeated after every 3 seconds and is a rest period here. In Australian conditions, the load application is only for 0.08 second whereas the pulse repetition is again 3 second in case of European. But in case of US, the load is applied for 0.1 second and rest period is 0.9 second. But in all these three methods, the deformation chart is more or less similar that there is a deformation, maximum deformation during load application and then it reduces during rest period. The method given in ASTM D4123 is like this. The Marshall specimen is tested and this is the loading cycle you can or you can say duration of loading during one cycle. This is the recovery period or you can say unloading time and therefore A plus B is total cycle time. This is 0.1 second, this is 0.9 second and that is how vertical deformation is obtained and horizontal deformation is obtained in the specimen. You can measure both vertical and horizontal deformation if you want to find out mu, that is Poisson ratio. Now these are two types of deformations. One is called delta VI. This is instantaneous deformation, vertical deformation and this is the total deformation and same is the case with horizontal deformation also. Once you apply, you apply the load, you get instantaneous horizontal deformation and that is the total horizontal deformation. Now test procedure is like this, that in the first step we prepare the specimens and the code suggests laboratory molded specimen similar to Marshall specimen. The, if the aggregate maximum size is 25 millimeter, minimum height of a specimen should be 2 inch or 51 millimeter and minimum diameter will be 4 inch or 102 millimeter. If aggregate maximum size is 38 millimeter, then the minimum height of specimen should be 76 millimeter and minimum diameter should be 150 millimeter. The important point here is that this test can also be conducted on core specimens taken from the field. But core should have relatively smooth parallel surfaces and the core should also conform to the height and diameter requirement as given in this table. The second step is that bring the specimen at test temperature. So Marshall specimen should be placed or core sample should be placed in a controlled temperature cabinet for 24 hours and bring them to the specified test temperature and test temperature generally is 25 degrees centigrade. Then place the specimen in loading machine and that is the kind of loading machine. This test setup is similar to that used for determination of ITS. The only difference is that the test e equipment must be able to apply repeated load. Here a specimen is not loaded to failure. We apply only 5 cycles after conditioning of the specimen. Now this is what is called resilient modulus jig 
and the specimen is fitted into this jig it is, it is put in place using these four screws then you have a LVDT and actuator and a load cell and there is a cyclic loading cyclic loading now the step 4 is preconditioning of the specimen and depending upon the loading frequency and temperature a minimum of 50 to 200 load repetitions is typical after this seating load we test the specimen for 5 cycles and record the horizontal and vertical deformation during the test now this is how the test is done this is the resin modulus jig the specimen is placed in the jig it is kept in position using these four screws so that it doesn't move during loading and this is the LVDT here this is the LVDT which is used to measure the deformation you can use two LVDT one for horizontal and two for horizontal and two for vertical or otherwise we can only use the horizontal deformation for measurement of MR but if you want to know the Poisson ratio also then we should use two more LVDTs now this is the loading strip similar to ITS and that is the actuator and a load cell and we applied seating load here for 50 to 200 cycles and after that we carry out the test for 5 cycles and that is the kind of result you get for every pulse for every pulse you get some data here now this sheet you can see here this is what basically you get pulse 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and then mean and certain deviation and coefficient of variation. Now this is the peak loading force which is applied which is a part of ITS and this is the seating force here and total recoverable horizontal deformation total recovery potential deformation of 1, LVTT 1, LVTT 2 and that is the total of these two and since we use LVTT only for horizontal deformation in this case so you get only horizontal deformation so the this is the graphical part of the result you have this green line here indicates the force applied so this is the force applied for 0.1 second and then you have the rest period of 0.9 second is the pulse 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and you get the total deformation which is shown by yellow line here. This is deformation number 1, 2 and that is the total. So the equation to estimate Poisson ratio, different equation when you use a 100 millimeter specimen or when you use a 150 millimeter specimen for 100 millimeter sample mu is 3.59 h upon v minus 0.27 and for 150 millimeter specimen it is 4.09 h upon v minus 0.27 now this value of mu varies with the temperature it is 0.25 at 5 degree centigrade and 0.4 at 40 degree centigrade generally the value of mu is assumed in all calculations 0.35 this is the equation to calculate mr value mr value is given by p upon h into t multiplied by 0.27 plus mu now here mu is the Poisson ratio h is the horizontal deformation millimeter p is the applied load and small t is the sample thickness and if you assume value of mu as 0.35 this equation transforms to this equation 0.62 p upon h into t now to explain this let me take one example that in a test on Marshall specimen of 63.5 millimeter thickness a repetitive load is applied a repetitive load of 450 Newton is applied the horizontal deformation is 0 0.00278 millimeter determine the resident modulus of mixture assuming point assuming mu 0.35 so that is the equation 
when you assume mu is equal to 0.35 equation is 0.62 into p upon h into t put the value of p h and t p is 450 newton h is 0.00278 height is 63.5 you get mr value 1580 megapascal that is how the test data are used to calculate the region of modulus of a spot mixture the mr value depends upon several factors and these factors are grade of the binder test temperature air wires wires in mineral aggregate wires filled with bitumen and binder content so you can say that all parameters of mix design will influence the value of mr i'll show you one or two parameter here now that is how region modulus changes with temperature and bitumen content when you increase bitumen content mr value will reduce and similarly when you increase the test temperature mr value will again decrease so that is the effect of resident mod effect of temperature and binder content on resident modulus similarly the effect of air wires now if you assume that resident modulus corresponding to 5% air wires is standard or you can say the ratio is 1 then when you reduce the air wires it increases when you increase the air wires it reduces and similarly you can find literature on showing the influence of other parameters like vma or vfb on resident modulus so friends thank you very much for watching this video i hope you liked it you can write down your comments in the comment box thank you